Hey fellow creatives, today I'll be showing you the exact step-by-step -step process I use to create realistic charcoal drawings. This is a full demonstration, so most of this will be me drawing while I explain each step. Timestamps are in the description, so if you'd like, you can skip to the part that you're most interested in, or you can come back and review it later. Let's get into it. If you need a review on things like why I'm drawing upright instead of flat, how to hold a pencil, or a quick crash course on how to measure proportions, I recommend watching the video above first. I'll also link that video at the end so you can watch it afterwards if you want. The first thing we're gonna do is choose a source. Now, this is the source that I am working from. Ideally, when you're choosing a source, we want to really be able to easily see the value in the source we're working from. And seeing colors can be confusing in that. So, Ideally, you want to be able to convert your source to black and white. Also, we want to make sure that it is a similar aspect ratio to your page, just so it'll be easier to measure those proportions and get everything placed on your page correctly and not have too much white space or things running off the page. Finally, we're going to kind of break the rules of photography. Normally, when you're choosing a photo, you want something with like more neutral or soft light. But in this case, we want really harsh light and dark values because charcoal is a very dramatic medium. So we wanna be able to get those lightest lights and darkest darks and really see that contrast so that it will ultimately be more dynamic in our finished product. First of all, this might just be a problem for people with sweaty hands, but try not to touch your page before you start drawing because your fingers can have oils on them that can imprint and when the charcoal starts going over that, you'll see that my fingerprints start showing up because they had oils on them. So try not to touch your page. And the first thing we're gonna do is block in the entire page with vine or it's also called willow charcoal. We're gonna cover the whole page. The reason why we're gonna do this is because it blends out to a shade level five on the value scale, there are values one to nine. One being lightest, nine being darkest. We want to create that middle value, level five, and we're gonna do that with willow charcoal. After you rub that willow charcoal on the entire page, we're gonna blend that with our finger. Make sure it's clean and dry. We want that charcoal to actually stick to the page. And this is the base that we're going to work from. So after your entire page is blocked and blended, the next thing you're gonna do is sketch out the position of subjects or objects in the picture. Just a quick review of something we learned in the video that I linked at the beginning and then I'll also link at the end. We wanna draw a box containing the length and width of the objects or subjects in our picture and then mark the center of that box and find the center of the photo. Look at the details around that center and kind of start from there on our page. We're gonna use relative measurement for correct placement, and we're still using this willow charcoal to do our sketching. Then, once you get your general sketch, you're going to take, I used a medium charcoal pencil, and establish the correct lines for your drawing.
subtract the light values. So this is where the fun part begins. We're going to be focusing on values one through four of the value scale. So all of those really light values up to our level five. So what you're gonna do, look at your source photo and identify the parts of the picture that are middle value five, and then focus on the parts that should be lighter than that. Those are the parts that you're going to subtract. So what we're using to do that are our blending stumps and a kneadable eraser to get the lightest values. All of these things, or most of them at least, are included in the kit that I'm going to link in the description. So you can access that if you don't have some of these supplies. You really need a kneadable eraser to get those light little details as well as blend out your lightest values. And just a quick tip on cleaning your kneadable eraser, you can just stretch it out really far and really just knead it. It is called a kneadable eraser and that's how you clean it. By the way, if you're interested in seeing more content like this, check out my channel for more tutorials and a daily glimpse into my journey of becoming a professional artist. I'm currently in a year long professional art program, so I'm trying new techniques every week and keeping you up to date on my progress, sharing tips for how you can replicate these techniques at home as well. So if that would interest you, go ahead and poke that subscribe button so you never miss a new video. Next, we're going to build those dark values after we finish subtracting our light values. So now we're focusing on values six through nine, our dark values. I generally use soft charcoal pencils and soft compressed charcoal for dark values. Just a little background. When it says soft, that also means it's the darkest. I like to use the soft just because it's the darkest and easier to work with. We're also using those jumbo charcoal sticks that say soft for this. And after you've filled in those dark values and just kind of drawn them in with that dark soft charcoal, we're gonna start blending those out. So we don't want that rocky look that you first have when you use charcoal. We wanna use those blending stumps to have a softer look. Another tip on how to clean blending stumps is using sandpaper. So just like I have in this kit, I am using the sandpaper provided to kind of rub the edges of my blending stumps so that the charcoal is no longer there and it's clean and ready to blend again. Yeah, 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 yeah
The last and probably most exciting part of a charcoal drawing is adding those final highlights. So for this, you're going to need white charcoal pencils. Those are not included in the kit I have, but I'm linking the ones I'm using down in the description. With these, we are marking our brightest highlights. So this is our level one. And this is after we've already added all of our dark values. And we're going to highlight things like really bright light reflections on glass, light in eyes, reflections on hair. I did a portrait of Aubrey Hepburn earlier where white charcoal pencils really helped the reflections on her hair really pop and also the light on her lips. Don't have very many really bright highlights in this particular example. Then finally, once you're done with all of that, you've subtracted your lights, you've added your darks, and you've added those really bright highlights with your white charcoal pencils. The last thing you might wanna do is take a look at your background, start blending out your background. I don't do this very much in this drawing, but there's something, there's a concept called chiaroscuro, which literally in Italian means light and dark. If we're looking at our subject and the objects in our photo, if one side of the subject is really light, we want the background beside that to be darker, to create more contrast. The inverse of that is if we're looking at a subject or object in our drawing that's really dark, we want the background around it to be light. You can use the concept of chiaroscuro to add that dramatic effect by manipula manipulating your background. And usually I use a little bit of that soft, dark charcoal in my blending stumps to get those dark values in the background. And then I use my kneaded eraser to kind of subtract um, some things I don't want in the background to get those light values. So that's it. Those are the exact steps that I use to draw anything in charcoal. If you found this video helpful, Give me a thumbs up and hit me with any comments or questions you have. I will put the links to the supplies I've mentioned in the description below as well as the videos. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this and I'll see you in my next one.